Some developments now for former President Donald Trump and his legal cases. Uh, we know several judges have put gag orders in place as Trump continues to show strength in the 2024 presidential election polls against all the other GOP contenders. Our correspondent John Glasgow joins us now live from our New York newsroom with more on uh, what Trump is saying uh, in the court. To reinstate her gag order on former President Trump's case in his federal case, that is, that he's charged with plotting to overturn the 2020 election. The gag order was temporarily dropped after legal challenges by Trump's lawyers. Since then, Trump has made comments on social media about his former chief of staff. Meantime, here in New York City, Trump got fined $10,000 for violating a partial gag order for this comment that people watch live right here on Newsmax at a civil case of overinflating his assets. Watch. This was a trial should have never been brought, but if we had a jury, it would have been fair, at least, even if it was a somewhat negative jury, because no negative jury would go against me. But this judge will, because this judge is a very partisan judge, with a person who's very partisan sitting alongside him, perhaps even much more partisan than he is. So the gag order prevents Trump from commenting on members of the judge's staff. Trump was forced to take the stand and explain who he was talking about. Under oath, Trump said that he was actually talking about his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, but the judge ruled Trump not credible and that he was actually talking about a law clerk. This is now the second fine imposed on Trump for a gag order violation. As Cohen, as for him, he was under cross-examination. He admitted to lying numerous times about Trump and his own actions, but last night, he defended his behavior and said this about Trump. I saw a defeated man. I saw somebody that knows that it's the end of the Trump organization, already found guilty of fraud. The license will ultimately be taken. And now this entire case is merely about how much. This is merely about how much disgorgement the attorney general will be seeking. So at the end of his testimony, Cohen said Trump never specifically told him to change a property value, instead saying in his own words that Trump talks like a mob boss and that it was implied. Trump's lawyers then asked for an immediate verdict, which the judge declined. Then the former president got up and walked out of the courtroom. So let's go back to the gag order in his federal case, though. Prosecutors, they want to reimpose one. Now, the American Civil Liberties Union argued that the gag order violates the U.S. Constitution. Now, this is somewhat surprising as the ACLU has been very critical of Trump in the past. The union argues that everyone is entitled to the same First Amendment protection against gag orders and that they say that they're just too broad and too vague. Bianca? John Glasgow reporting from our New York City newsroom on all of these new details here on those gag orders. John, thanks. Good to see you. Let's talk about this a little bit closer now. Welcome in former National Press Secretary for the Trump campaign, Hogan Gidley with us today, and CEO for the Trump Media and Technology Group, Devin Nunes. Guys, good to have you both in with us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Appreciate you know, what a spectacle. I mean, $10,000, this judge and Goron, it, you know, it seems like they are, you know, drunk with power there, be it Letitia James or this judge. Uh, your take on, you know, what, what he said yesterday, first to you, Hogan, and how the judge is just, is, is clearly trying to make an issue out of this. Yeah, this is an extension, really, of, of where Trump was in the White House. Now they just have some legal teeth behind it. Remember, the reason the media and so many others hated Donald Trump was because he didn't use the filter of the nightly newscasts to, to get the message out to the people. He went to Twitter. He went to social media uh, to, to tell people exactly what he was thinking. Now he's developed truth and does it through through that platform. Uh, and, and he likes to explain to people what's going on. He likes to defend himself. In this particular instance, I can't believe I'm saying, I think the SCLU has it right here. But the fact is you are suppressing this man's First Amendment rights. Now, whether the attorneys want him talking publicly or not, it's a different story. Yes. But the fact is Donald Trump has that right. And it's very frustrating when you see this judge who from the outset allowing cameras in the courtroom, which is, you know, his prerogative, kind of did that 1980 sitcom thing where he looks down, does a double take, takes his glasses off and then looks at the camera and smiles and looks at the crowd and shrugs it off like it's some kind of joke. This is very serious because the American people's rights are very serious. And when they're trampled on, they deserve to be called out, whether that be by Donald Trump or anybody else. And they should have the right to do so and do under the U.S. Constitution.
Yeah, and you know, you're yeah. right. And Devin, you know, ACLU was pretty clear uh, in their filing. They said Trump retains a First Amendment right to speak. So even they believe that in the D.C. case, this is not New York, it's with uh, Tanya Chukon, that his rights are being violated and he's the leading GOP candidate. I mean, this really screams well, to, uh, you know, the First Amendment rights for any American, but let alone a political candidate and a former president. Yeah, I was I was quite frankly shocked that the ACLU actually came in uh, and and took this case up because for a long time they've been quiet because President Trump, as Hogan said, has been mistreated for a very long time, dating back to his entire presidency, where he had the whole apparatus of the government. Let's not forget spy on his campaign and him, the whole Mueller hoax, the Russia investigation that destroyed and and took up so much of of the American people's time and I think really hurt Donald Trump's presidency. But more so specific to to this case in New York, this case is totally ridiculous. And I think there's a lot of people out there who should be saying something. They should be standing up like the ACLU is Mm -hmm. right now. And that would include many business journals uh, throughout the United States, people that are in business, you would think even banks and lawyers who do work for for, uh, for for banks and for financial services, the financial services sector, members of Congress in the Senate. And here's why. This is not complicated. And Trump is being very mistreated right now because what they're talking about here is loans that he got through a bank. Now, anytime well, you go to get a loan, right. whether it's a home loan or whether it's this. a business yeah. loan, there, there is a process in place that's, by the way, backed up through 200 years of state law in New York that people have to follow, that the banks have to follow. We know. They have yeah. to go get right. an appraisal, for example. So and- financial statements are, quite frankly, I mean, I'm sure Hogan's filled them out. I'm sure we all have filled them out. Look, I may value there's a disclaimer, my house at And a there's a disclaimer price. right on the front saying you have to go reevaluate this. This is not, this is not, you know, we're just putting this out there. There was a disclaimer on the front. Um, I do <clears> want to get you out. We have some remaining time here. I just want to get your reaction to Michael Cohen and, and showing up there and saying uh, Trump's this defeated man. And, well, he didn't tell me to change the property rates. He just implied it here. Uh, it is stunning. It is stunning. But I guess Letitia James, this is her, you know, star witness here. Hogan to you. Yeah, you know, the last time I was actually in New York at Newsmax, I was walking down the street and I saw Michael Cohen. I thought to myself, geez, what a clown this guy is. Obviously convicted uh, problems with lying in the past. And so for him to have any credence or credibility with the legacy media right now is ridiculous. It just seems as if anyone wants to say something bad about Donald Trump, you've got a platform. There are plenty of outlets uh, that aren't really necessarily news, but are more opinion designed and dedicated to try and take down Donald Trump. And Michael Cohen just is the latest stooge to try and accomplish that. It's not going to happen. The American people can see through it. Devin, I have uh, 20 seconds. Final word to you. Yeah, I think that Cohen is a product of the corrupt Department of Justice in this whole system that Donald Trump's been living through. The guy got beat up, beat the hell out of him. They finally broke him. And now the guy will do anything and say anything because the guy, sadly, is kind of down on his luck. And so the fact that New York would try to use this guy is absolutely ridiculous, but not as ridiculous as this entire case, period. Well, we know uh, former president not afraid to continue to fight and speak out on uh, the truth there, what he believes is happening behind those uh, courtroom doors every single day. Devin Nunes, Hogan Gidley, great to have you both in. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. All right.